okay a very good afternoon to you dear students i hope i am audible to all of you okay good so let's continue with the part that was left yesterday and discuss the question answers as well so yesterday we uh, discussed about uh, uh, the shock that the husband gets when he sees his uh, wife sipping stout in the middle of the afternoon george is shocked and he also gets annoyed with her uh, because she is not made the tea for him even though he doesn't want it and uh, then his wife uh, tells him that uh, he had become a laughing stock at the club where people call him pompy ompy pearson and uh, uh, and he refuses to believe it but when his uh, son also affirms the same he gets the shock of his life and uh, george then goes on to complain in the presence of the neighbor mrs fitzgerald that uh, uh, he has uh, he is not being served the he is being called pompy ompy pearson and uh, uh, the state in which uh, his daughter is she has been crying her eyes out because of the harsh treatment uh, by her mother and mrs pearson time and again asserts her authority over everybody and also asks george not to forget his mannerisms his and to behave properly when any friend or any visitor uh, of hers comes to uh, see her okay and uh, george towards the end gets is actually frightened out uh, of his wife and he's he is actually not able to come to terms with the strange behavior of his wife and he uh, loses his temper and he also shouts at his wife for uh, of creating a scene in front of the uh, neighbor mrs fitzgerald so we were on page number 50 we have to complete the chapter and we have to discuss the question answers as well so uh, page number 50 mrs uh, 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 he is saying to to george and doris now listen you too mrs fitzgerald says i want to have a private little talk with mrs fitz but that she is allowed to say mrs fitzgerald but then she just remembers that now she is mrs fitzgerald and therefore she corrects herself hastily very fastly she corrects herself and says i have to have a private little talk i need to talk because she cannot take it any more she feels that her uh, family has suffered a lot and she cannot take it she cannot stand it and she says i need to have a private little talk with the mrs pearson so i will be obliged if uh, you will leave us alone for a few minutes i'll let you know when we are, when we are finished go on please i promise you that you will not regret it so she is uh, asking she is requesting uh, uh, both of them george and doris to go away from there okay and uh, uh, there's something here that only i can deal with and george he rises up immediately and, and says i'm glad somebody can because i cannot he says i'm glad that you can deal with it because right now the situation in which i am in i feel i cannot handle it anymore and i feel i cannot deal it deal with it and i feel i cannot correct it in any way so he just asks his daughter to come along with him and they both go away from there george and doris exit left as they go mrs fitzgerald moves to left of the small table and sits she eagerly beckons she eagerly calls mrs pearson to do the same thing Mrs Fitzgerald we must change back now we really must why because this has gone far enough i had not imagined this to go that far i can see they are all miserable i can see my family they are feeling miserable and i cannot bear it a bit more of the same would do them good so she says that just wait for a little more time and uh, let me handle this for some more time making a great difference already already there i can see a great difference in everybody's attitude she moves to the right of the table and sits no i can't stand any more of it i really can't we must change back hurry up please mrs fitzgerald so just get up and let's change back to our original selves i cannot take it any more well if you insist yes i do please please so she just stretches her hands across the table eagerly mrs pearson takes them quiet now relax and mrs pearson and mrs fitzgerald they stare at each other and they mutter the same thing as uh, mrs fitzgerald had done earlier or stradam or stratalam or stratalam dambona then they carry out the same action as before their bodies go lax and then they come back to life again but this time of course they become their proper personality so now mrs pearson has the personality of herself and mrs fitzgerald has the personality of mrs fitzgerald only ah well i enjoyed that i didn't she says i didn't like it i did not enjoy it at all 
okay and uh, well you ought to have done now listen mrs pearson don't go soft on them again else it will all have been wasted okay so uh, uh, she says uh, that you have to retain you have to retain your dominating your domineering behavior and you are not to apologize in front of uh, your family members you are not to feel sorry for anything you are not to even give explanations for any act of yours okay so she says uh, i'll try not to mrs fitzgerald uh, i'll try not to mrs fitzgerald they are, they have not had uh, as long as i'd like to have given them another hour or two's rough treatment might have made it certain i needed more time with them i, I needed at least one or two hours more and then that would have uh, served them right okay and that would have made certain that they uh, learn to behave properly i am sure they'll do better now though i don't know how i'm going to explain again she's back to the same point she's back to explaining she says don't you start explaining or apologizing or you're done for we've already discussed it she says you're not to apologize you're not to explain anything otherwise you'll go back to square one you'll have to start it all over again and it won't be possible then it's all right for you mrs fitzgerald after all they aren't your husband and children she says you can it is so easy for uh, you to say uh, that but uh, i cannot deal with it i cannot bear it because this is not your family these are my uh, you know family members my husband my children so very impressively very boldly mrs fitzgerald tells her now you listen to me you admitted yourself you were spoiling them and they didn't appreciate you at all any apologies any explanations explanations and you will be straight back where you were so you don't want to start it all over again and you were the one who was all the time complaining that your family members don't appreciate you they treat you like dirt they treat you like a servant and if you start giving uh, uh, explanations if you start apologizing then you will go back you will uh, to the same position as you were earlier i am warning you dear just give them a look a tone of voice now and now and again and to suggest you might be tough for them if you wanted to be you just have to change your tone you don't have to be just appealing in front of them every time you just have to give them a harsh look once or twice and it ought to definitely work anyhow we can just test it we can test it right now in front of uh, right right now in front of me how well what is it that you would like them to do that they don't do stop at home for once yes and give me a hand with supper yes i want them to help me in the preparation of you know dinner supper and all anything you would like them to do that you enjoy whether they do or not anything else that you would like them to do whether they are fond of that thing or not you should be and you need to tell me what is that thing well yes i like a nice game of rummy of cards but of course i hardly ever have one except at christmas that will do them so that is sufficient she moves towards the door left and turns but remember just keep firm keep steady you're not to go lax you're not to take it lightly you just have to be firm and strong and you just need to give them a tone of and a harsh look uh, and uh, you know your tone need to be changed and you've had it she opens the door hoy you can all come in now she calls everybody but remember remember time and again she keeps on telling uh, you know mrs pearson to have a firm hand George, Doris, and Cyril—they just file in through the doorway. They're still afraid. They're still, you know, hesitant, and they, 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 they're just looking apprehensively at Mrs. Pearson. I'm just off to let you enjoy yourself. The family looks anxiously at Mrs. Pearson, who smiles, much relieved. This is the first time uh, throughout the day, you know, in, during the day that she has smiled. So they're very happy that the mother is finally smiling. So they smile back at her. Yes, mother. Seeing that you don't want to go out, I tell you what I. thought what we would do so she she uh, first of all she addresses doris and says that since you're not going outside today let me just tell you what uh, we should do today miss fitzgerald goes away and gives her a final warning and uh, uh, she is about to go while she's still there and she gives a final warning to her and says remember remember what is she wanting her to remember to remember to keep a firm hand remember to be steady you know nodding then she just looks sharply at the family no objections i hope no mother whatever you say smilingly she says i thought we would have a nice family game of rummy and then you children could get the supper ready while i have a talk with your father george is very happy suits me and he looks challengingly at the children what about you two 
uh, yes, that's all right. Sarah also agrees. And uh, Doris is a little bit hesitant as well. I and Mrs. Pearson certainly has that changed tone and says sharply. She says, "What? Speak up!" And uh, hastily, Doris says, "Oh, oh, thing. I think uh, it would be lovely. It would be lovely to help you out, and we would prepare dinner, and you can have uh, you know uh, talk with uh, our father." Goodbye, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Come again soon. Yes, dear. Night all. Have a nice time. So Mrs. Fitzgerald exits from there, and the family just gather gathers around, clusters around mother, as towards the end of the play, and the curtain falls. Okay. So this was the play. Let's remember page number fifty-two now. We have we're done with the play. We'll discuss the question and answer. Okay. So okay, let's discuss the questions then. Uh, we'll just discuss the first question from here, and then the questions of your assignment. This play, written in the nineteen fifties, is a humorous and satirical depiction. of the status of the mother in the family what do you understand by satirical depiction what is satire theek hai yes to shame someone the use of irony use of sarcasm in order to just ridicule or expose uh, uh, somebody or something so what are the issues that this play raises very simple question what are the issues that are being raised in the play what are the issues that the play raises Uh, again akashita okay let's start with akashita then somebody else can tell the next part yes akashita so this play written in the year 1950 this play is dealing its issues which are witnessed and experienced by mothers who are working at home they are not respected and appreciated for the work they have done and they are treated like servants they do not have a, a perspective about things and their family members do not respect them and uh, they do not uh, they think that they do not deserve it and they think that they are just at home and uh, they are enjoying themselves rather than the mothers at home are working more harder than them yes yes very good so the issues uh, it raises is about housewives Mothers who are being treated like servants in the family, and uh, they are just at the beck and call of everybody. They are uh, taking their orders, they are fulfilling their wishes, and they are neither respected uh, nor their individuality is given any respect. So they are, uh, and even their opinions are not asked for, and nor do they matter for anybody else in the family. So this is the issue that the chapter is dealing with, and it raises these issues. Do you think it caricatures these issues, or do you think that the problems it raises are genuine? and how does the play resolve the issues and do you agree with this kind of resolution that the play offers yes the second part of the question and i don't want akashita to answer each and everything kiran pick up yes ma'am the problems that play raises are serious the treatment is of as a is that sports comic the play right adopts an and Usual method to resolve the issues. He takes the help of magic of the east. Incantation of a magical spell helps in the interchange of the personalities. Now, Mrs. Pearson, with the strong and sinister personality of Mrs. Fitzgerald, gives rough treatment to the daughter's son and husband, respectively. Her stern looks and commanding tone suggest to them that she cannot be really tough. The spoiled member are brought. down by the heavy dose of exposure of reality to them they agree to stay and help in preparing the supper while the housewife has to talk to the husband the resolution of this issue seems far fetched and unnatural but extreme means have to be adopted in disaster management yes um, very good so it uh, problem that it issues that the play raises are basically very serious and very genuine and they are quite universal they are not just restricted to mrs pearson's family and uh, but the kind of resolution that uh, it uh, offers is quite far fetched as she said it is quite impractical because we cannot have you know such magical spells and things like that in our you know, uh, uh, practical lives so uh, the kind of resolution that it should have offered it is it is kind of a comical and uh, this is only fiction but in the real life the uh, you know we need to have uh, you know mrs pearson should have changed her attitude uh, you know long time back and she she should have that tone she should have that uh, you know the kind of look the kind of tone which mrs fitzgerald used in her place but mrs pearson should have changed 
herself, but the, the kind of resolution that this play is uh, giving is far fetched. But yet, as uh, this is fiction, so it uh, uh, seems to be quite appealing for this chapter. Okay, so let's discuss the questions that are uh, a part of your assignment. If anyone can just share it uh, here, because I'd uh, put it in your class group also in your English group. So uh, you know, I think you can, you would be able to share it. Please, can anyone just share uh, those questions that were a part of your assignment? Uh, okay, then who is uh, who is the writer of the play Mother's Day? Everybody knows who is the writer. Yes, J. B. Priestley. Okay, D. D is the answer. You can you can you can uh, type in the chat box. Okay, because I'm not taking the earphones off for the multiple choice questions. Okay, what does type in uh, in the chat? Type the answer in the chat box. Okay, what does the play Mother's Day talk about? Are you up? What does? Yes, it talks about the status of the mother in the family. Yes. Next is how does the author describe Mrs. Fitzgerald? How does the author describe Mrs. Fitzgerald? Option. Speak up. How does D? Yes, both B and C because she's sinister, she's evil in uh, looking and also has a deep voice. Good. Next, Mrs. Fitzgerald is a dash of Mrs. Pearson. Who is she? Yes, neighbor. B, neighbor of Mrs. Pearson. Next is, it's, a wonderf it's wonderful having a real dash living next door. Complete the dialogue. Real fortune teller. Yes. Real fortune teller. C. A living next door. Good. Next is, where did Mrs. Fitzgerald learn to tell the future? Where did she learn to tell the future? Yes? The East. The East. B. Good. Next. How does Mrs. Pearson describe her family members? How does she describe them? Option A. Option A. Thoughtless and selfish. Good. Next is, in what endeavor does Mrs. Fitzgerald help Mrs. Pearson? Yes. Yes, to make her family treat her well. B. Option B. Good. Next is, uh, how would you describe Mrs. Pearson? How would you describe Mrs. Pearson? Is she dominating? Both B and C. Is she considerate and compliant? Yes, B. Both B and C. So it is option D. Good. Next is, how does Mrs. Fitzgerald plan to help Mrs. Pearson? By C. Person. Yes. By swapping personalities with Mrs. Pearson. Next is, Mrs. Pearson was dash about Mrs. Fitzgerald's plan. What did she feel about Mrs. Fitzgerald's plan? Yes. Hesitant. Yes, she was hesitant. B. Next. What is the first thing that Doris does as soon as she enters the house? D. Yes, she asks her mother to iron her yellow silk. Next, where, where was Doris headed for the night? She was going out with Charlie. Yes, B. She was going out with Charlie Spence. Next, buck teeth and half-witted. Who has been described here? It is C. Charlie Spence. Good. Next question. Question number 15. Question number 15 says, What does Mrs. Pearson suggest them to do for the night? C. Yes? Both A yes, both A and B. That is C. Family game of rummy and getting the supper ready. So it is C. Next question, Bache. There is a next question. Question number 16. Yes. Question number 16. It says, why was Doris red-eyed? Because of crime. Option C. 17. Well, she is suddenly all different. Who said this and to whom? She is suddenly all different. 
Yes, it is Doris for her mother. So she said that it is not what she said, but the way she said it. And she's suddenly all different. Doris for her mother. Next is, how does the author describe George Pearson? Option all of the above. Yes. Option D. He's pompous, he's serious and he's 50-ish. Yes. All of the above. 